Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today we have a shootout between 2018 Grand Seiko Limited Editions. Almost the same size, both blue dialed, both limited in their series, and celebrating two very different design and engineering traditions within Grand Seiko. We're comparing the SBGA 387 on the left, the USA Boutique Limited Edition, and the SBGA 267 on the right, the 9S 20th Anniversary Limited Edition. Let us start with the darker dialed watch. Okay, the SBGA 267 is technically, if we're using correct nomenclature, the Grand Seiko Heritage Collection 9S 20th Anniversary Limited Edition SBGA 267 series of 1500 pieces. That's a mouthful. Let's put it on the wrist and get a sense of a wristful. It's not a big watch. A relatively constrained size at 39.5 millimeters in diameter, it wears more like a cushion case in truth. It's not a thick watch either. At 13.3 millimeters with a sloped case flank, it will easily slide underneath the cuff. And lug to lug, this 9S evocative case is 47.4 millimeters if you include just the case, and if you include the solid end links of the bracelet, it expands to 50 millimeters. The spacing between the lugs, and you do have strap tool apertures for accessorizing, but the spacing between the lugs is 19 millimeters, and that's the same between the two watches. You will find that the design of the bracelet on each watch is almost identical. And I can bring the 387 by just to show you that this is essentially a draw because they use the same piece and they have the same lug spacing. There's not much to tell here, but I'll quickly run through on this example. You have removable links fixed by screws. You have one, two, three half links on the flanks, and as you can see, you have the ability to finely size with them. The clasp in both watches is thin and secured by twin trigger deployment. Now jumping back to the case itself, here's where you can really see a difference between them. This contemporary 9S case form is quite distinct from the 44GS inspired SBGA 387. The difference, well, this is what Grand Seiko calls a polyhedron and it traces its roots to the 1967 44GS. So if you've heard of a 44GS case, this is exactly what's being described. You can see in particular those almost insectoid compound eye profiled lugs ends, quite distinct from the, shall we call it, bionic banana? A bionic banana. That's exactly what the 9S case is. So this one's cambered and wraps around the wrist, whereas the 44GS, though short and somewhat arced, is not nearly as dramatically cambered from side to side, and the bezel is a little bit harder, more angular, and flared out over the mid-case, whereas the 9S features a much more conventional case form with integration of lug hoods and bezel. You'll also note that the Finishing on this watch features a satin sheer flank and a Zeratsu black polished hand finished, that is tin plate polished, polished segment, the same executed on the underside of the lugs and the underside of the mid case. The dial on this watch is blue and what Grand Seiko calls a mosaic design. There are 80 individual rayons splaying out from the center. You have the Grand Seiko GS and also an S evocative of the Dainai Sakosha logo from the 1960s. That was the predecessor company of the Seiko instrument. The watch beaten away at 10 beats per second like a Zenithal Primero. It uses a manufacture movement 9S85, continuing the tradition of the 9S for the 20th anniversary. It is a High beat, high precision, 37 joule, six position adjusted, manufacturer caliber in a 100 meter water resistant case with a spectacular oxidized titanium rotor with a tungsten winding mass. It features stop seconds as well as a quick set date and as you can see this watch featuring quite a bit of case back theater lacking on the SBGA 387. So this timepiece with a 55 hour power reserve, plus five minus three second per day rough adjustment, it'll be a little bit more like eight seconds per day when worn on the wrist, but with a screw down crown and something of a sheer guard in that it's countersunk into the side, it's very similar in that regard to the SBGA 387. So you get a good sense of the lines of this watch and you get a good sense of the lines of its rival, its in-house rival. Quite a bit of difference on the crown side, especially with respect to the relieved design of the crown on the 387. Now let's jump real quick over to the US Limited Series. Of course, part of a series of three pieces launched as USA Boutique Limited Editions. This was undoubtedly the most interesting. The case itself is drawn from that 44GS pr tradition, which means it is both true to Grand Seiko history and distinctively more Grand Seiko in its design and more recognizably Grand Seiko than the 9S case form on the 267 that we just saw. You'll also note that on the wrist, the watch is slimmer, 12.8 versus 13.3, and lug-to-lug, -lug, 
The watch is 46 millimeters. The ones who include the end links of the bracelet, they're almost identical. The 267 is 50, this is 49.8. 19 millimeters spacing between the lugs, and once again, not much changes south of the lugs because the bracelets are almost identical. In fact, they may in fact be the same part number. Now, a lot changes about the case. You can see the facets, the overhang of the bezel, the harder edges, and more of them. You'll also appreciate the fact that the watch has a dial that, although blue, is nothing like the 267. Obviously, there's a power reserve indicator for the three-day power reserve, but that's not the main difference. The main difference is this Kirazuri pattern, which is based on a Japanese craft art that literally translates to shiny painting, often used in kabuki, and you'll find that the particular appearance of the dial at any orientation and any light will vary considerably as a combination of galvanizing and stamping produces this effect, and even two within the same series might show a degree of variation. Now, 558 of these produced, and you can see all of the action is on the dial side. True blued, counterweighted, lancet-style seconds hand, moving with that characteristic spring drive sweep. You've got a date window, you have a power reserve, it's maxed right now, countersunk into the dial. And one feature, true of both watches, is the quality of Grand Seiko dial furniture. The hands are hand-finished and hand-placed. All of the indices are diamond polished to create their sharp faceting, immaculate finish, and then placed by hand. I happen to like the accenting of yellow gold on the dark blue dial of the 267, although make no mistake, the silver and dark blue combination on top of the Kirazuri base is quite dramatic on the 387. Now turn it over, it's not quite the theater that the other watch is. You can see more of the movement, but the rotor isn't nearly as entertaining. This right here is a 9R caliber, 9R66, automatic, 3-day power reserve, spring drive. You can see that unidirectional governing wheel. It's a hybrid of mechanical and quartz, so there's no motor, there are no batteries, there's no capacitor. The only electric is a induced electric current created by the motion of the governing wheel through a magnetic field that wakes up a quartz oscillator that in turn slows or speeds up the governing wheel by means of a back EMF force. The result being this is an entirely mechanically driven timepiece with a hand that moves only in one direction, no start and stop, and achieves plus or minus 15 second per month precision. So now you know what you're dealing with. It also has the refinements of the 9S caliber from the 267 in that there is a stop seconds function. You can stop the hand. There is a quick set date and it's a screw down crown with the same 100 meters water resistant. You can see the Grand Seiko logo on the back and of course a more open display case back that lets you see the principally mechanically finished 30 Joule caliber 9R66, but I should mention it's a watchmaker made and watchmaker regulated movement that is designed not just for the life of the watch, but for the life of the owner. Don't mistake this for disposable quartz. Far from it. Let's score this thing, starting with the 267. First and foremost, there are those for whom only a true mechanical heartbeat will do. If you want your watch to tick, and you want your watch to beat, and you want the start and stop of a Swiss lever escapement style in a Japanese watch, you need this. Between the two of them, this is the only true mechanical and mechanical escapement timepiece. It has a heartbeat. Spring drive is silent. I'll also mention that there is no power reserve scale on this dial. I like the power reserve functionality, but some people will never be able to find peace with this cutaway of the dial. It's the Japanese equivalent of the Rolex Cyclops eye for them. Moreover, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this watch, though similar in size to the 387, does fit slightly better on a small wrist. Slightly. It costs $500 less. Its case back is more dramatic. When we're dealing with mechanically finished movements, not hand finished movements, we may as well have a special rotor instead of a movement that frankly just looks like it popped out of a machine. The rotor truly has a sense of occasion about it. So that's what the 267 has going. So that's the SBJ 267. Let's talk about the 387. Okay, a regional special edition and with 550 to 1500 pieces, this is far less common than the 1500 piece 267. So you're gonna see most of them in the US and there's only 558 of them. I think the 44GS case is more distinctive of Grand Seiko, more enduring, it certainly has more history behind it, and I think it looks cooler too. The dial of this watch is more dramatic and more special. There are several mosaic dial 9S 20th anniversary pieces like the 267. Each one of the three US boutique series looks and feels quite different from the other, and they all feel different from any other Grand Seiko Special Edition. I'll also say, with Spring Drive, you have the tech interest, a unique technology to Grand Seiko, greater precision. I like the power reserve on the dial. Overall, the combination of the dial, the 44GS case, and the Spring Drive just feels more Grand Seiko to me.
That's my call. Let me know in the chat box below what is your choice between these two.